Hey star seeds. I'm over here at my magnolia tree with my hummingbird. Might not be able to see him, but he's up there somewhere. He's always here when I come. Anyways, the doves are flying around, flapping their wings in such a way so that I notice every time they go overhead. <laughs> I talked to a raven today, pretty close up. Some neighbor lady came out and scared him off, but uh, we had a good little chat. My husband was, uh, was there as well, so he got to be there. See it, but um... Anyway, I just thought I'd come over here to the little sacred grove but beside the park. I brought some... Um, Brought some stuff for the, uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bush there. I put some daffodils on it for the hummingbird and filled a little baby food tin lid with water for him. Um, I did not pick those daffodils. I found them on the ground next to the church. Figured some, yes, dove. <coughs> You might be able to hear them flapping around. <laughs> they're doing it on purpose because usually their wings don't make that sound. They only do that when they're trying to get my attention. But um, I made a little crystal grid. This is, I just call this like an angel grid. It's not very well organized, but it's got moonstone. It's got jasper. It's got ametrine, which is um, amethyst and citrine. It's got amethyst? Oh, hello. There's my hummingbird. You can probably hear him. Anyway, figured I'd pull a card while I'm here. Spend a little time meditating as well. But I got my holy water. Four ninety five at the mystical shop. Not bad. I put a little rock of um, frankincense and myrrh. Seal on the forehead. It's gotta be, you know, sealed on the forehead. Because we're the chosen. Anyways, found this at the bus station. I can't remember what kind of flower this is, but I'm sure whoever's watching will recognize whatever kind of flower these are. But white flowers are a symbol of purity, so we brought those along so that we can purify our hearts. Cleanse me from within and make me holy. So anyways, we're just out here doing a little bit of grounding. It's nice to be out in the sunshine. Maybe I can set this down. See what spirit has for us today. Let me just. What does spirit have for us today? Um, yesterday we were talking to the spirit box, and that's an app in your phone that you can get. Um, it's like it moves through the static uh, radio static, and picks out like little words, and spirits are supposed to speak to you through them. A lot of like paranormal investigators and stuff use that technology. Um, everything, like Nikola Tesla said, everything, if you want to know the, the secrets of the universe or the mysteries of the universe, I'm not sure what she said, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. That's why the hummingbirds love me. They've been making themselves known to me every day. If I don't come over to the sacred grove, then I'll see them somewhere else and they'll make sure that I notice them. Otherwise, well, I've just been keeping my eyes open and being, being more mindful. Hello. Hi. Look, he's right above me. Oh, I don't think you're going to be able to see him. You can probably hear, though. So, anyways, we were talking to the spirit box yesterday, asking questions about the Holy Grail and 
Excalibur, because my husband's really interested in that. And he's like, thinking the spirit will tell us. And the spirit's box told us the word Michael. So I'm like, hmm, there must be an Archangel Michael co connection. I Googled it and sure enough, there's an Archangel Michael connection with the, um, the Holy Grail and also with the, um, with the um, Excalibur. So, I mean, the Kings of Alba were my ancestors, the ones who founded Del Riata, um, the God Kings of Scotland and Ireland. Used to be Alba, where supposedly where Merlin went through. He was supposedly the one who erected the statues, but or not the statues, the megaliths, <laughs> with his magic, energy, frequency, vibration. They're finding out now that if you use a certain frequency, you can move, you can move things using those frequencies. And so we're thinking that the ancients had this technology understood and harnessed in order to do such things. But anyway, so if you get time, you can Google that. Archangel Michael, turns out he's connected to a lot of things that, who knew? Anyways, we're speaking to Archangel Michael right now. And he works through the birds, all the angels, the angels aka Pleiadians, what do we got here? Surrender to the sweetness. Now I've never actually gotten this card before, but so this is the first time I've ever gotten it. And here we have Surrender to the Sweetness. Quite beautiful. It's kind of like what's going on right here <laughs> in this little sacred grove. The birds and the trees and the water and the sunshine. Me, in my flowy dress. And there's a man here. There's white flowers there at the bottom. White flowers right there. <laughs> I did go out with my man this morning. Obviously, he was there with me to talk to the raven. Here, let's see. Um, surrender to the sweetness, Venus energy. Interestingly enough, Venus is actually the morning star, which is tied to Lucifer. I don't know what that's about. Venus energy, pleasure, joy, make love to life. <laughs> My husband has been on this Lucifer kick where he's like, we gotta forgive Lucifer. We gotta understand Lucifer. And maybe. Also got perspective. The fact is maybe we can forgive Lucifer. But that's from your end. Forgiveness is from your end. When it comes to the end of the person you're forgiving, that's more of an absolution thing where you're taking away their guilt and shame surrounding their sins. Of course, Lucifer made his choice to not be part of the world of God and he has no repentance. And therefore, without repentance, you can't be absolved of your sins unfortunately. But we can forgive him. We can forgive anyone. We have all forgiving power as the chosen 144,000. Courageous peony, multifaceted, unique lit nature. Let yourself be seen. And fall into my arms, surrender, holding the sweetness. Oh, holding the opposites, <laughs> extremes of life. And this has some similar imagery to what we're seeing here too. Uh, it's interesting, two of these cards I've never, surrender to the sweetness. These are both about surrender. Both of these cards are about surrender and they both have similar like imagery with the water and the woman. That's the same woman in both of these. 
So that must be who I am right now. In this one, a man is in front of me, and in this one, I am holding him out of the water. So let's just find out exactly what this is talking about here, shall we? I've never read this fall into my arms. Yes, hello. The hummingbird is still watching. Page 66. The great mother ushered you in when you took your first breath, and she'll be there when you draw your last. She knows how challenging life can be. The being human can be lonely and confusing. The polarity and separation can be excruciating when your soul remembers the oneness of source. But at the same time, it can be incredibly glorious and sweet. So often we see things as either good or bad. When things go well, we make it mean that we're being rewarded. And when things are bad, then perhaps we've done something wrong. However, we're all here to expand and grow. It's through the extremes of life that we do exactly that. You're being invited to welcome the highs and the lows of the human experience to let them initiate you more fully into life the agony and the ecstasy, the beauty and the bitterness. This life is but a single breath in the inextinguishable existence of your experience as a soul. The Great Mother wants you to hand over your loneliness, worries, hurt, sorrow, fears, burdens, and doubts. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> to lay them on her altar, to fully to fall fully into her arms, to remember that while these extremes are difficult, they can also be magnificent. Magnificent. The more wildly the pendulum of your life swings, the more truthfully you can say, I've truly lived. I'm ready to embrace the extremes of my life. I lay all I'm carrying into the Great Mother's altar and fall completely into her arms. And by the Great Mother, they're just referring to the earth lay yourself on the earth so to speak and surrender that's what we're that's what we're doing here today directly underneath a magnolia tree with a hummingbird watching surrender all right let's find out exactly what this other card means now <laughs> it's fun it's honestly fun like and some people are like, oh, why aren't you doing productive things with your life? But if you look at my North Node and South Node on my birth chart, it's talking all about how I have North Node in um, Sagittarius and South Node in Gemini with, um, I mean, it's like, oh, the Sagittarius North Node is in the third house and Gemini North Node is, or South Node is in the ninth house. And that basically just means that in my past life, it was all about communication and I was a teacher. And then in this life, I'm learning how to like transmute that energy from my past life experiences into something that's more of a metaphysical or spiritual nature. So I'm trying to learn how to teach spiritual matters like my birth tarot, which is Hierophant Temperance. So it's a balancing act. Anyways, let's look up what this other card means here. Let's put this back down here. I just wanted you to have a little bit better view of the nature around me while I goof off here. So, so fall into my arms, surrender holding the opposite extremes of life. Um, that's the one that we just read. Now we're on to surrender to the sweetness. And I do believe that I have drawn this card at least one other time. And it makes sense it would pop up here while I'm in such a location as this. This is a sensual, highly feminine card. So card number two of feminine. Both of these are very feminine energies that we've pulled today. 
It's a call to surrender to the sweetness of life, to let the ever-abundant feminine take over, to taste the fruits you've been working so hard to grow, to let your senses take over and really drink in your life with wonder, to get intoxicated on the simple bounty that this planet has to offer. And what you have within you when your well is full. Being here is how I refill my well. The ancient Babylonians connected the feminine goddess Ishtar to the planet Venus, and in Roman mythology, Venus was the goddess of love and beauty. In our night sky, aside from the moon, Venus shines the brightest. I always see it first, as soon as I look outside after the sunset. I always see that star, like, I'm like, let's go outside and see if we can see stars once the sun is gone. I do say goodbye to the sun as well. I love the sun. And you should too. Don't worship the sun. Don't worship anything besides the Lord God, Yahweh, creator of all. Don't worship anything, but enjoy his creation. He put it here for us. He put it here because he loves, he loves these stones. He's like, wow, I created this. I created these for you to experience my presence and to experience my glory on earth. Wow. Take time. Did he put us here to hustle and bustle and to strive for these weird material, like, no, silly. Anyways, the ancient, okay. So exactly along the lines of what I'm saying here, here we have time is our most precious resource and it's the greatest healer. My hand is starting to, to hurt actually, which is basically saying that I need I have some energy that needs to be released that is kind of building up. So I should probably hurry up so that I can do some more walking. I don't know. Or that I'm supposed to be uh, exercising my spiritual gifts. That I have some spiritual gift that is wanting to come out. Which I do have the gift of prophecy. I have a lot of gifts, but my main gift is the gift of prophecy, and I have experienced many times where I have seen things before they happen, known things before they happened, and if I know something's going to happen and I don't say it, things will happen physically to me, such as a painful hand, which is pent up energy. So there's something that needs to come out. Anyway, many of us are so busy dealing with our lives that we forget to enjoy them, is what I'm saying. Disconnection from the sweetness causes more pain than we realize. So many of us walk into soulless buildings five days a week in the name of survival. We strive to build the life of our dreams and drive ourselves to exhaustion. This card is wooing you back to the pleasures of being human, focusing on what really matters and enjoying your incredible life. How can you surrender to the sweetness of life? What's one way you can enjoy your life a little more? We got birds calling out here, talking to me. Spend some time with the birds. We are teaching birds math at the park today. Like, ah, ah, one, two. Ah, 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 one, two, three. <laughs> like, just take time. I mean, what do you have to lose? Your soul? Your money? Do you know what I'm saying? Ah, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm saying. How can you not? Whoever is watching this is obviously a star seed. You feel it. You can feel what's going on. Now, my husband tried throwing away this tarot deck. The fact is, is that I cleansed this thing with holy water and uh, holy wood. This is not evil. I have the gift of prophecy and this is helping me get a message out. This is helping me get a message out and I have the gift of prophecy. This is just pictures on a little page. I'm harnessing Archangel Michael. The hanged man and the world is what we got. The hanged man and the world. The hanged man is actually Jesus Christ hanging on the tree. You could also see it as Odin hanging on the Yggdrasil tree. Odin brought down the word. The word is the rune. The rune is the word. 
in the beginning was the rune, and the rune was God, with God, and the rune was God. When Odin hung on the Yggdrasil tree, he brought down the rune from heaven. The word is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the word, is the rune. The world tree, and the world, I mean, it's obviously a little bit inappropriate, but whatever. Um, she's got a, she's got a lion, a bull, an eagle, and a human on the four corners in a circle around her. I can't remember exactly what this card means, but I don't know a lot about tarot. The fact is, is this is the message it's probably tied to the cards that we just read about surrender. We got the doves flying overhead. I just felt their wings because they created wind over my head. I don't know if you saw them or not, but... They swoop down while I'm over here because they're like, don't forget we're out here. Don't forget we're connected to the angels. They might actually be angels. I'm not really sure. <sighs> so the hanged man, wisdom, trials, circumspections, discernment, sacrifice, intuition, divination, and prophecy. So yeah, I was talking about prophecy and then I pulled this that talks about divination prophecy. Jesus Christ. Odin, whatever. So it makes sense that would pop out after I'm talking about prophecy, right? Right. The world, assured success, route, voyage, immigration, flight, change of place. Anyways, I will look up later the combination of the world and the hangman. You can also look into the Thoth interpretation of these cards. And then it gets pretty deep. <laughs> I just met somebody in the store who's an ENTJ, who I explained there's actually a connection. Can you see my bird up there? That would be really cool if I got the bird in the shot. Anyways. Met an ENTJ at the store. They're the most rarest type. I'm an ENFJ, second rarest type. According to modern day statistics, not the old ones. The old ones say INFJs are more. Um, rare. But that's from like a 1970s study. Nowadays, the ENFJ is the second most rare type, and the ENTJs is the first most. And of course, I saw her at the Moon Store, Mystic Movement. Because where else are you going to find a rare person? In the mystical shop. <laughs> rare person. And she owns the place, or she co owns the place. She's a runner. She's a boss. Of course, ENTJs are always the boss of something. They make money. It would be really good for me to partner with her. She really likes me. I told her that I was going to go to the ocean and check out this whale that somebody said was beached so that I could help it pass on energetically. But, uh, and she was like really interested in that. I told her that, um, I didn't end up going because I, the card said to look for a sign and I didn't find it so in fact a storm blew in so I had to go home <laughs> but um yeah let's see what's on the top and bottom of the deck we got the world card obviously because I just had it this is just this is like the um nothing card we got the three of pentacles I have no idea what that means <laughs> I'll look it up later. So anyways, this ENTJ that I met, I told her that there is a connection between the Thoth and personality type and astrology. I haven't looked into it yet, but um, yeah. Also, this is that piece of red cedar that I talked about in the other video. Native Americans believe that this is the tree of life. The tree of life, eh? As in from the garden? Of course, the cedars back then, or over there, rather, were the cedars of Lebanon. They weren't red cedars like we have over here, so. But yeah, I just got this because... Energies. 
we're trying to contact the right spirit, so we need conduits, we need... My hair is also... My hair is... an antenna. So grow your hair out, people. Keep your hair growing. Good for you. I'm putting this wrong deck in here. Starseed Oracle deck, everyone. Have you always had a longing for home without really knowing what that meant? If so, you could be a starseed soul. Anyways, I gotta go. Love you guys.